Hi folks. So today we have this um, Eastbourne Camlock that uh, Rick Moore in England sent me a while ago. And uh, it's a fairly standard tub uh, tubular lock, but it's been sitting in my uh, naughty bucket for a while because uh, the outer diameter of this is actually just a little bit smaller than uh, the standard size that we get in the U.S. So if you look really close, you can see where I tried to use my usual uh, Southern Specialties uh, self-impressioning tool, and it was grinding on the edge there. Um, so it didn't quite work. And uh, the other day, I broke one of my Peterson American Lock Bypass tools, and I decided to turn it into a uh, new tool for dealing with these sorts of locks and uh, finally getting some use out of my Sparrow's Mantis tool. So we're going to go over how that works. Uh, so this is the Sparrow's Mantis. Uh, it's a, a tension tool for tubular locks for single pin picking. And come on, focus. And the way it works is you have this square tab and this triangular tab, and the square tab fits into the index notch on the plug, and the triangular bit fits into uh, the outside uh, groove. And so depending on which uh, direction you want to turn, if you want to go clockwise, you put this uh, outer tab on the right side. If you want to go counterclockwise on the left side, and just apply a bit of uh, gentle but firm uh, pressure on the tips. And uh, for a pick tool, we're going to use uh, this Peterson American Lock Bypass tool that I uh, ground down to a flat sort of screwdriver style. And if we look really close in the face of the lock, you can make out uh, the pins. This is a seven pin standard configuration. So seven pins arranged uh, at equal distances uh, with a space or a gap between them uh, where the index notch is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our uh, mantis, get it locked up there. Uh, normally there would be a tailpiece like this that fits over the back, but that uh, is kind of a pain to mount up in a vise and doesn't really uh, matter uh, as far as actually picking this thing goes. Normally there's a rotation limiter on the back of this as well that uh, prevents the lock from turning more than either 90 or 180 degrees uh, in whichever direction it's supposed to operate. So uh, let's see what we can do here. So we've got tension applied and we're just going to go in here. One nice thing about uh, single pin picking tubular locks is it is much easier to locate uh, each individual pin because you can slide your probe in like that and just try to slide it around and when you hit the side of the pin that will tell you exactly where it is so you just lift out a little bit and slide over and now you are centered on the pin. So uh, pin one, pretty springy. Pin two, very springy. Pin three, springy. Four, a little bit of resistance and a small click. Five, a lot of resistance and a nice strong click. Just go back and hit four again because I think we dropped it. Uh, six, springy, seven, gives us a click, go back to one, very slight click, two, nice heavy click, three, gives us a click, and now it turns, and now all of the pins, except for the one that is now where the index notch usually is, has lined up with another uh, driver pin and spring. So we're going to have to start again. So pin one, a little bit of a click, 
this time, two, very springy, three, fairly stiff, but not enough to set, four, very springy, five, give this a click, six, a little bit of a click, but not quite, and I think we just dropped something. So one, two, three, a little bit of a click from three, four, give this a nice solid click, five, springy, six, springy. I'm just going to keep going around and going around and going around. Because normally, uh, if you are dealing with one of these in the wild, you have to turn it at least 90 degrees to get the tailpiece to clear whatever uh, it's locking up. So we're going to reset there because I'm not finding anything. So one, bit of a click, two, springy, three, springy, four, Give this a nice solid click. Five, not much. Six, not much. Nothing on one. Two. Three gives us a click. Four. Five. Six. Keep going around here. Two is very stiff now. And now we've turned almost 90 degrees. This might be enough to get it unlocked. We might have to go uh, again and uh, unlock it just a little bit so we can turn just a, another 5, 10 degrees if we were doing this in the wild. But that's enough to show the theory. And, uh, you know, really, at this point, we could just stop. Uh, but if you notice, there's only the one notch on the outside of the body, which means that this lock is designed to only uh, to be basically key retaining or only allow the key to be removed when it is in that uh, 12 o'clock position. So if we were going to be uh, polite to the owner, we would have to lock it back up to the uh, 12 o'clock position. So we're gonna do the same thing, just in reverse now. So, little click on one, click on two, three is springy, four is springy, five is springy, six is in the Index position, seven, give us a strong click there, so we're just going to keep doing this, I know it's going to take a bit, but best to show the entire process. Dropped a bunch of pins there, so I'm going to reset and that is a problem that you're going to run into. The other thing is that once you do drop it, the mantis is really annoying to try to pick up off the floor. You got to hope that there's some gaps in the floor boards and that you can sort of wedge your fingernail under it, but. One gave us a click, two, three, nothing on four, five gave us a click, six is 
knots on a driver pin and seven gives us a nice strong click so I think just about there there we go and one more time and we should be back that's one And there we go. All locked up. So, you can see these things are pretty simple. You don't need those uh, self-impressioning tools. They are a bit expensive uh, for a lot of people, but uh, they are obviously quite a lot faster. Uh, the one real drawback to them is that you need to get one that does the exact diameter and pin spacing that you're going to be dealing with, which at around $100 each can get uh, pretty expensive. So, uh, until next time, uh, have fun and happy picking.